Okay, so in this video, we will try to find the following limit by factoring directly the largest power of x. And as we're about to see, we will not be successful. So as always, we verify the case. So as x goes to negative infinity, inside the square root, the largest term is 4x squared, which will go to positive infinity, and the root of infinity is also infinity and then plus 2x, but as x goes to negative infinity, 2x also goes to negative infinity. So what we have is an indeterminate case. As we are subtracting two larger and larger quantities, so it's not clear what the limit might be. Well, as always, we can try to emphasize the dominant term. That is, of course, the largest term by factoring it, so if you look in each case, the largest term here is x. Inside the square root, the largest term is x squared. And the root of x squared is eh, roughly x. So we will try to factor an x from this expression. Of course, since x is negative, we'll have to be careful here with the root of x squared. So we factor from within the square root, factoring x squared, then we're left with 4 plus 6 over x plus 1 over x squared, then of course plus 2x. Now we have the root over a product, so we'll use the basic property that root of a, b, when a and b are both positive, is of course the root of a times the root of b. This will give us the root of x squared. And at the same time, we'll also take care of that. The root of x squared, since 2 is an even power and the root is the positive branch of the square root, this has to be a positive number. So it's not only x, but x in absolute value. And since x is negative, to make x become positive, we have to negate the negative. So the root of x squared will be negative x. So we have in the first case negative x times the square root of the second term. No changes there. And then positive 2x. Well, now x is a common multiple of the first and second terms. We can factor x from the expression. You could also, if you wanted, factor in negative x, but that's not necessary. So what are we left with? Negative the square root. And then positive 2. So the factoring now is complete. Let's see if we've made progress. So of course we check the case. So now we have a product. As x goes to negative infinity, well, x, of course, goes to negative infinity. And what's happening to the second term? As x goes to negative infinity, 6 over x and 1 over x squared both go to 0. So this would be approaching the root of 4, which is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So the second term of our product is approaching 0. And so we have, once again, an indeterminate case. We have a product of two terms one getting larger and larger and larger, the other getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's not clear how this will play out in the limit. So by factoring x, the largest term from the expression, we did transform the case, but we still don't know what the answer is. We can try one last transformation. What if we send x down to the denominator? Let's see if that will transform the case in a useful way. So we'll leave the second term as is.
And if you want to send x down to the denominator, you have to divide by the reciprocal to give a multiplication by x. So if you divide by 1 over x, of course, same thing as multiplying by x. Now, how has this changed the case? Well, the second term was not transformed, so it also, as before, approaches 0. Or I should say, still approaches 0. And now, we are dividing by 1 over x, which also shrinks to 0. So we have now a different looking case, but still indeterminate, as we have a fraction where both numerator and denominator are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we still don't know from the case what the answer to our limit might be. And at that point, we've hit a real problem. We try to find this limit directly by factoring out the largest term that changed the case, but was still indeterminate, we try to create a different case by creating a fraction, still a 0 over 0 case. And so at that point, we have to simply give up and admit that this direct approach of factoring will not yield an answer to this limit. So in the next video, we will try a second approach to see if we can crack this problem.